You're listening to Sarah Hagen Backstage, with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick, both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen Backstage. My guest today, Abe Cunningham, is best known as the drummer in the band Deftones, and he's also one of the chillest guys I know with such a signature sound to his playing. We are going to get a bit nostalgic today, talking about our experiences finding music and some great tours of the past, but we will also get into how things are going lately and what is coming up. So come along with me as I catch up with Abe Cunningham. Abe, welcome to the podcast. Sarah, thank you so much. What's up? Everything. Everything is up. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm sitting here with my dog. What is your dog's Isn't name? It? My name, her name is Nora. She oh. uh, was a rescue last year from this uh, town called Sonora, over kind of by Yosemite. Mm-hmm. And there were there were fires and all this, like there tend to be a lot these days. And um, yeah, so she's Nora from Sonora, and she was like in this fire, and now she's here. She's been with us for one year. Oh my gosh, she's so cute, Nora from Sonora. That's adorable. Yeah, yeah she's I a love doll. It. I well, love she's it. A dog, I also, actually, but <laughs> I also got a dog uh, almost a year ago um, as a as a puppy, and uh, it has been an adventure. He's a golden retriever, so Ooh. Um, yeah. and retriever is highly accurate. If there is anything unknown, you know, we we <laughs> we live on a lot of land, and right. they, you know, you never know what's out there in in a in the uh, forest and the dog finds everything. So it's and brings it back as a gift to you and brings it back. He retrieves. An, he does an offering. Yes. Here's an offering. <laughs> could be anything. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So besides, besides getting a dog adding to the family, um, how, how, what, how have the past couple of years been for you while we've all been in a little bit of a holding period through the pandemic? Fully. Um, they've been good. I mean, obviously ups and downs, but uh, I just tried to keep, moving forward and keep it, keep it light and positive. Um, a lot of great things happened in that time as well, you know? So, I mean, obviously not us being a touring band and not being able to go out and, and do what we do, uh, like so many others was, well, it just, it, it is what it was. It is what it is. It, it was what right. it was, you know? Um, yeah. So that was a trip and something that we could always count on, you know, um, even for us, we're like, oh, we, we're in a pretty good spot. We can, Hey, you want to take a break? Yeah, let's take a little break. And then, hey, you want to book some shows? Yeah, let's. So that was cool. But to actually have it plucked, that option just plucked from uh, reality was was a trip, man. So, yeah, you want to take a break on your own terms, right? When you want to. Yeah. But hey, you know what? You you make lemonade out of uh, these lemons and add other things to it as well. So, you know, I learned a lot, you know, I think everyone, uh, you know, we all, we all needed to take a break. I think the earth and everyone on it needed to take a break. Um, Not always pleasant, you know, but. Right. Got a a little reset. Absolutely. Uh, Forced downtime a little bit, you know, I I feel like, Um, and what I'm hearing a lot from a lot of musicians is that, uh, they gained a new perspective on downtime because not there's not a lot of downtime in this industry. You're kind of like, go, yeah. go, go, always on, you know, on to the next city, touring, all of that, and then being at home for an extended period. Um, right. Although jarring, I think it it gave <clears throat> everybody a like little bit of perspective. Fully, you know, and balance is the main thing. If you can do uh, a bit of each, uh, you know, or whatever you do, and have the other side balancing it out. That's what we all hope to achieve, you know? So, um, but back to it, we are, and it's amazing. So two years came and went and here we are now. So. Yeah. You and know. you and the Deftones came a new album during the pandemic too, right? 2020. Right. So actually it was two and a half, whatever it was years of the whole, you know, lockdown and, and, uh, but we actually had a year prior to that. So it was three and a half for us. So we're like, you wow. Know, yeah. So you were like ready. Shopping. Yeah. Cause we made a record. We, had, we actually decided to take this time off. Hey, let's take a year off. Um, we've been getting together a, a tiny bit here and there, um, just jamming and keeping it, keeping ideas going. And then we ended up um, getting enough things together to make a record. And we, we did that. That was the agreed time off. And then 
all of a sudden there's another two and a half on top of that. So yeah, we made a, made an album and and um, you know uh, right I guess we were mixing it right right at the end was when everything sort of kicked in. So we had to do a lot of that, um, you know, over the over like this, you know what I mean? Yes, um, yeah, over Zoom calls. And which all that stuff. yeah, which makes the process a bit. I mean, if we're all in the room, we can say, oh, take everything down and push my drums up. There you go. And you know, mm -hmm. we're in the room. Uh, we can solve those problems pretty quick. And um, but yeah, so just another way of doing things. And and um, that was that. And then it came time to put it out. And we're like, well, what you know? I mean, we're just sitting around. Like, we can't really play and tour. But maybe if there's anyone that digs our music at all, maybe uh, maybe something new from us could help them get through this. What you know, this whole time. So that was our. Um, you know, obviously to tour on that, it would be we actually. You know, that was. the the goal, but it wasn't, wasn't the case. So, right. You know, right. Yeah. And it got pushed. It got, it, you know, things kept getting pushed a little bit, but you, you just got back from months out on tour. So that must've felt so good. It was great. Uh, being an aging rocker. It was awesome. We just did four months straight, uh, two in the States and some Canadian dates as well. And then, um, and then we went right into Europe immediately into that for another, you know, six to seven weeks. And, uh, it was it was great. If they would have added another month on, I would have been cool with it. But it was definitely time to get get home. You know, we haven't we used to do three month tours all the time and take a week off and another three. And but you know, but it, I felt great. We felt great. Um, the body was holding up fine. Um, just getting back to it was beautiful. That's amazing. And and yeah. um, how did you find like the experience, the live music experience, the crowds, all of that? Was everybody just so happy to be there? pumped yeah i mean it was amazing um you know we we all need these we need we need interaction um we need humans we need to kick it with other people we need to shoot the shoot the shit we need to experience the back and forth of, of concerts and that electricity and that that synergy you know um yeah it was it was very uh it was it was great it was so so much so needed but so so pumped you know what i mean um really cool yeah. so Absolutely. Like feels like a little bit of getting back to normal. Fully. Right. After after everything. And and you all, so you started playing the Deftones formed. You were like really young. So this has been your life, basically. Like the yeah. tour life, the the Deftones life has been your life. So I can only imagine like how how it felt like getting back to yourself, even huh. getting huh? back out. What? No, yeah, it was some, it was the best. Yeah, we started this band when we were teenagers, you know. We were we were, Chino and I were 15, um, you know, and we're not anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. So this is what we do. And this is, you know, I mean, obviously there's more to our lives than, than that, you know, I mean, but yeah, this is what we do. And um, just getting back to it and, and again, you know, a reappreciation of each other, you know, with this time off and and a bit of age too and everyone just, just enjoying and understanding and, uh, you know, being a bit more grown up towards towards each other, so yeah, it's uh, it's really right now. It's just a great time for us, man. It feels it feels amazing to just to be able to to do it and to and keep going the places that we've been able to go. Um, and it's a very very special thing. So that's that's amazing. Um, and it, like just talking back to that time when you started playing, um, being in a band like since you were fifteen years old, that's first of all, incredible and so rare, I think nowadays. Um, but like, how did you get into drumming? Was it something that you just picked up? Did you take lessons? Um, what were you into back then that kind of like gra made you gravitate toward the drums? Um, yeah. So I grew up in a little small town called Mendocino, like a, maybe a couple hundred miles north of San Francisco on the coast. And at the time, it's still one of the most amazing places. It's very much like New England as well, you know, sort of. Remember Murder, She Wrote? Yes. Uh, there was this town called Cabot Cove. And that yes. was actually meant that was actually Mendocino because it looked like New England. So oh, okay, uh, sort of the same. That. Yeah, um, that was filmed there. And anyways, so it, it's a beautiful little town, tiny town. Um, but it always had all these. I, I was in, this was in the 70s when I when I lived there, 70s and early 80s. So it was this place where all these musicians from the Bay and people just had land up, but they always came through a very fruitful um, area for, for just music, man, you know, close enough to the Bay area as well. And but, but like a lot of people had land there and, and homes and stuff from like, you know, Booker T Jones had 
property and all these different things, oh, a lot cool. of different people. So anyways, long story short, my dad was a bass player and my stepdad, a drummer. And um, there was this place called Toad Hall that was uh, in Mendocino and up in the woods. And I used to, they used to have gigs there and I was always there as a baby um, crawling around before I could walk and knocking over cymbal stands and, and, <laughs> and beer bottles with cigarette butts and, you know, just <laughs> grabbing things. And, but that was it. The drums, that, that was right. it. So I was always around music, always around them jamming, um, you know, and, and gigs on flatbed trucks out in the woods, gigs at little bars and, you know, all around. So it was always just something that was there. And my mom had a restaurant. She was a chef. So those two things are what I did. You know, I've always, I mean, they go kind of hand in hand as well, music and restaurants too. So, okay. but that was it. I would just up there and I, um, uh, around seven or so, my dad started having to like, my stepdad um, had to start, you know, doing more things to kind of, I guess, more adult things to, to, to make it, make it, to provide. Sure. And the drums, the drums were there. And um, I took over the drums and he saw that and that was it, you know, so. That's so great. That's yeah. so great. And did you did you see a lot of like with your dad and your stepdad, you were like in on the music scene as a as a toddler, but like growing up, did you <clears throat> get to see a lot of live music, a lot of shows, like get to see your influences? Totally. I mean, they were they were just straight. My parents are were and are are you know just music lovers. And so there was always the best music around and and just shows were such a huge part, you know. And then you know, I remember I saw the police one time and like goes into the scene tour and and I was on my dad's shoulders and Santana opened up too. It was pretty wild. Like what, wow. Santana opening for the police. And it was summertime in Sacramento and it was hotter, hot, hot as hell. And all of a sudden it started raining and it was just, you know, but so they, they brought me everywhere and I was always around and, um, and they, they supported, you know, they knew I had the bug. Um, it was caught at an early age and there's always that parental thing too. where like, you know, can you try to, maybe go to college for a second, you know, and, and <laughs> you know, as I, as I got older, you know, the band had already started, yeah, yeah. you know, so, but, um, you yeah. know, like, but they, they knew, they knew that I was bitten by the bug, man. So, um, absolutely. Yeah. And I tried for a second. I've tried to, did you really, couple, what, couple you, what were you studying? I, I, my mom was, um, there, I'll just say pushy enough to make me go two years to, um, to, uh, summer school. So I got out of I got out of high school thanks to her being pushy, mom. Mm -hmm. um, I got out a semester early, so I went right into like just junior college, you know, in, in like a you know Sac City. Um, but I, I yeah. just took some things that I liked. There was like some a lot of psychology kind of classes and and uh, neat, you know, some prerequisite junk too. But that was two yeah. semesters, and I was like, I'm out. Like I tried, I gave it, you know, and they they knew so. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, it is, it is pretty amazing for like you to know what you want at a young age and go for it and like go yeah. in that direction. You know, I, and, and support is everything. I mean, you know, having, having support, um, you know, and parents that understood, um, you know, it's, it's everything, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think, I think when you have that support as a child, you, carry that on to your role as a parent too like thinking about what how how to give your children that support too like it it trickles down because you know how important that was and like what it meant to yeah. you and how it shaped you and also how life works too you know we hope to look to figure that out a bit as we go you know uh, i mean i'm a dad i have two sons and who are like adults now you know and and it's so funny because one my eldest son is um more they, they have grown up on the road with us, you know, and all the band guys, there's, they're all uncles and our crew guys. And, you know, they've been mm -hmm. out whenever school was not happening, they would come out and, you know, be on the road with me and for summers and stuff. So they they love that whole side of things, but um, they also, you know, I think well, like, again, my, my eldest son is more kind of just wants to just be at home and, and, and do his things, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah. not, not taking away from anything. He's, but then my youngest son is wired like me and he wants to go, go places and, and wants to cruise and check it out and drive and go. And, you know, so it's just funny because um, they're, well, they're two different humans, of course. So they should be doing their own, but this is <laughs> neat to see how that, that, that kind of was divided up and um, it's neat. So 
I say go, you know, go. Yeah, if, if... yeah absolutely. But like yeah. having you, you having grown up with that support, you know, that right. like supporting your, both your children there in their completely different directions is yeah. the best thing you can do for them and like exactly what they need in life. Um, totally. So that's pretty amazing. I love that. Yeah. I, I, it's a common theme um, in these podcasts. The parental support piece of it is just so so common. I just spoke with John Wackerman and he was telling me about his mom going to like extreme lengths to get him to the auditions that he had as a kid, even, right. even to the point where she drove the only vehicle available that was a stick shift and she didn't know how to drive it. So they right. drove in second gear all the way. Right. So <laughs> That's awesome. You know, it's just, it's, it's stories like that that are just incredible and inspiring and, um, you know, it's just, it's amazing to me. And another thing that like popped into my head when you were just talking the, so you got to see all this live music and experience that you mentioned the police and, and, um, Santana, um, what were your, like, what were you into growing up? What's what genres of music? Because, you know, the music that you play isn't always necessarily the music that you grew up listening to or right. that you were influenced by. This is, I, I usually have a cheat sheet with me um, for things yeah. such as this. Like, uh, <laughs> I, it's, the, it's the hardest question. Again, my, like, my parents were, were so into everything. Like, you know, I saw Muddy Waters, you know, when I was a kid, you know, like Stevie Wonder was one of my first shows. And, and, and those things are always etched in, and they're just in my marrow, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's crazy. So, I, I mean, they, they always had, and again, working in restaurants and, working as a kid in my mom's restaurant when I was like five and, you know, just busing and just doing things like there's always music and the kitchen is so wild, but, um, they were into everything. Uh, I mean, th these, and these albums that, you know, that I, that I, that's how I learned to play drums, you know, just like by putting on these records from, you know, from everyone, um, the Beatles, when I, when I learned to play, um, the intro to magical mystery tour, it kind of starts mm -hmm. to do that, do, do, and it gets, it kind of goes up a little bit, yes. like, Wait, you know, and just playing and, I was like, wait, I'm, I'm latching onto this. So I would just play the cassettes. And then of course, you know, and records, their records. And, but then I started, you know, when I was a teen, I was able to go and kind of, you know, purchase my own things and trade cassettes and record off the radio. And of course, you know, and of course, you know, Def Leppard and, you know, I mean, <laughs> Motley Crue, um, the police fully, you know, um, I mean, there's a thousand, I'm totally stumped right now. No, that's okay. I mean, it just, just it kind of like shows the the various genres, but um, yeah, but yeah. I, you know, I think like one of the things about growing up in like the eighties time frame and listening to cassette cassettes and all of that, like you had to kind of like work for it. You know what I mean? You had to work for your music. You had to, like, you know, let's get into that. Let's get into ready, no, ready. totally. Yeah, you couldn't just Google things or look it up on YouTube. Which yeah. I'm not dissing whatsoever. It's great totally. because we have access to everything now, which I do love. Yeah. Um, you know, I even Tool has all their music now out there, which I yeah. love. So that's great. But like when you were a kid, like you had you had cassette tapes that you taped off the radio, and like you had a bunch of songs that you love with missing beginnings because you right. couldn't quite like quite get, yeah fast enough. Yeah, <laughs> that's what and we if you live, that's what we live, yeah. With. But if you live in a small town, you couldn't, you know, they, they, maybe they had a record store, you know, or, you know, and then they didn't have huge stock. So you had to say, hey, you know, if and record stores are always kind of funny because the person that worked there was usually kind of like a not always, but generally like a kind of a, a record snob who wouldn't. You, oh, hey, could you think can you order this? Like, why would you want that? You're like discouraging, like, man, I'm yeah. to give you some business. I'm trying to <laughs> can you please order? And then, you, of course, then you had to wait for it to come. So the whole patience thing, um, yeah. earning your own money to, to buy these things, you know, and then that took patience too, waiting to yes. get paid. And then, um, you know, and then, so that was, a, in Mendocino, it was a small town. Then I, I was, I'm from Sacramento originally, but I, um, I grew up there and then I moved back here and it was all, you know, Tower Records, which is from Sacramento, you know, and, and um, you know, and then the mom and pop stores everywhere too, but I just, would go down to tower on broadway which was my spot in sacramento um mm -hmm. and that was that was uh you know obviously and then tower books too going and looking at modern drummer and everything in there and all the you know yes. thrasher and everything and the weirdos were in the corner over there looking at porn and they had like you know they had a um a better homes and garden but they would have a like a you know i was like oh i know what you're doing man but <laughs> tower was everything you know like 
Tower yes. was was um, you know Tower Video. I'd written my videotapes from there, and you know, yes. and Betamax. Yeah. By the way, oh my gosh, yeah, we were a Betamax house. So Betamax, yeah. Yep. Anyways, yes. but yeah, so but patience and just the explore. I mean, you just just go in there and look and just dig through and just dig, 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 and albums and just get yeah. turned on by covers. I would buy things that the covers the grass would buy that. I didn't even know what they were. You know, the band was about or the music was about. Um, but yeah, and then and then it's amazing. Who's to say it's different these days? I I feel it is, but if the music hits you the same way, even though you can get it every version of it live, you know, it, who's to say it's any different than than it was? Um, obviously, the you know right. the delivery. I, I think the only thing, my only gripe is that there's too much at once. When I bought records, I would I had a you know a rule that I could never buy more than like three or four because I wanted to give. A, each album it's it's due and, and really be able to, to take it in um you know yeah. and appreciate it if you have 48 million records at once like you're not going to give it maybe you are but you're probably not going to give it yeah all, probably probably won't know. spend the time yeah. right that like unless you're some you superhero and you could right so <laughs> but also, who knows like, there is something about the music um that was made back then where like and and there there are records that come out nowadays too that are like this but that are like the entire thing from start to finish is just packed with like great stuff, you know, the yeah. concept albums, the, I don't know that it just, it, there was something about it. Like you would listen to the whole thing and yeah. you would know which song was coming up next. Like they went one into the other and you anticipated it. You anticipated like what was the next song because you would listen to it so many times that you knew what yeah. was coming up. Um, and it, it was like an album as a whole. I think there's so much like, you know, singular song listening to because you're yeah. just like Googling stuff or YouTubing or whatever. Um, whereas like back in the day, it was, I say back in the day, but it, it was like the whole album was a thing and you did, you wanted to spend the time and listen to it over and over again and right. absorb it. Um, you make a group, I mean, a, a concept album or even the concept of an album, you know, right? like in a band or a group would, would, you know, I mean, and if you were flipping over from A side to B side, you wanted the, you know, the next, be it a, a vinyl or a cassette, you still had to, you know, you wanted to have the next half be either just that and, and another half totally separate, or you want it to, you know, be able to, to mesh and blend in. Um, yes. So, yeah, I mean, it's a trip. And then, I mean, there's still a lot of people trying to, trying to, um, make, we, I mean, we try to make full albums. They might not be concept albums, but we try to make an album that you, 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 um, uh, you put on and hopefully don't take off till the very end. And it's, it's sequencing and, and making, you know, choosing how the songs go and flow into the next is, is huge for us. You know what I mean? And how, yeah. because you want to drop the needle and go or push play and go and then let it yes. be until it's done, you know? So. Right. Right. Yeah. And then, and then also there's something else about like going to a record store and like the hunt for great music. Like you mentioned the the album art, um, searching through finding something like i don't yeah. know it was just it was or or the other thing was like um like rare releases you know you'd be looking through uh i don't know the led zeppelin or whatever and you'd find something like a live album from yeah. something that you never even knew about yeah. it was the greatest thing ever that's that part of it i i missed that a little bit yeah um you know but like and imports too, like regional imports. You always did tracks for Japan were always a thing. And if you could get, you know, like, yeah, you know, and that's that, yeah. And it's the quest, it's the hunt and the quest for all that. And exactly and just the, the excitement of, of just being turned on like that, you know? So, um, and it's still there. I know it's still there, but it's just different. It's a different delivery. It system, is. You know? It's different. Yeah. It's, it's different. And I think like also getting concert tickets, it's different. You know, you have to go, you used to go and like wait in line physically in a line getting your concert tickets um it's just i can't tell me how many times i've been in line and no one's gonna sell out and getting right up maybe a person away or right to the to the window and they go boop sold out yeah, like, sold you know. out. yeah. that happened it happened it was well, yes. you know it was tough and now you have to now you're fighting against the secondary all the you know the scalpers and all these who buy all the tickets at once and the bots and they raise the price it's like it's really gross man it's it gross is. It is gross. The bands it and is. the bands get blamed. What do you mean you're selling? You're charging to us, dude. Someone bought all the tickets, man. It's not even, and now yeah. they're charging them back. You know, so pretty gross. It is. It is, and I, I, I hate that the bands get blamed for that kind of thing too, because it's 
that's that's not what's going on you know it's it isn't it's the secondary like you just said the secondary like the buyers and sellers and everything and it gets crazy but you know anyway but but kind of like going back to the whole album as a whole kind of thing i have to say you know um around the fur for me was huge when i was um you know listening to music when that album came out um it was just different really than anything that i had heard before and I saw you all on Ozfest a couple years after that album came out. I think right before, right before White Pony came out. I think you guys were on Ozfest, if I'm not mistaken. Was that at Tweeter or whatever it's called? Tweeter, yeah, Woods. The Great yeah. Woods. <laughs> Great Woods, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Verizon. Whatever, whatever. it was yeah. called, yeah. right? I know a different bank or Tweeta. A... Tweeta Senna. <laughs> that was so good. I can't, I can't do the Boston accent justice, but that was fantastic. Um, Neither can I. Yeah, it was good though. Way better than I can do it. Um, it was, yeah, that place was, it, we all call it Great Woods because it's changed names so many times. Now it's called the yeah. Xfinity Center. So Xfinity, that's what it is. That's what it I is. I mean, yeah. we know it's not, that's not what it's not, but it's that's not, what it it's, yeah. Great yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's Great Woods. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what a great, that year for OzFest, I think back on that year, it was so incredible. The lineup was unreal. Um, it was, was just that so Primus great. and Slayer. Was that Black Sabbath and Primus Black and Slayer? Sabbath, yeah. Primus, Slayer. Um, I think was Tool on that Ooh. year, maybe? No, I think oh System was on it too. Oh yes, yes, that's what System, it was. Yeah. Yep. And maybe Drain. Yeah, there's a yeah. I remember that yeah, vividly. It was great. It was yeah. so so great. Slayer. Um Slayer. Yeah. <laughs> like what a, oh, yes. what a lineup. It's so it's so so fantastic but i remember seeing you guys and um and just like you know and that album it's it's timeless for me like i i listen to it i actually run it's a great running album because (laughs) around the fur because it um you know being a musician like and being a runner you can't run out of time with the music you're listening to it does not work so you have to find the right tempo (laughs) <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's tugging at you and like, oh, I got it. My foot needs to hit when I'm, you know. Exactly. You yeah. cannot, you cannot do it. I, I, I challenge any musician to like run out of time with music. And Ooh. I, you know, I find myself walking in time to music, which is kind of ridiculous, but um, in general. The same thing. Right? I'm, you can't I'm with you. It. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I catch myself, I'll be like walking through the mall and I'm just like, okay, Sarah, this is not your theme music. Like ch- chill yourself yeah. out. Um, but anyway, great. I mean, all, all of your albums have been so fantastic. Those two stand out for me as like very influential. And, um, and you know, I just like you're, you're part of the music. The sound of the Deftones is so distinct. I just have to talk about like the beats that you you create and your um you know your hi hat and the really really high snare drum like it just it, it's so part of the sound you know it's recognizable I guess is what I'm trying to say like you can hear right. you can hear you in that and it's just so fantastic. I mean, yeah, it's something I I don't know. It's just of course you you want to make your sound and and you want to forge your own path always um i think that with us it was you know trying to fight through loud guitars it's definitely a, we're definitely a, a a heavy guitar it's still the foundation of our sound even to this day you know I mean, there's a lot more going on but fighting through huge marshall stacks and everything and that sound you know crank the snare up you know and, and there was a lot going on too i mean of course like uh you know tim from primus you know primus was that first suck on this, the Primus, you know, the live Primus record was huge. And, you know, I got that on cassette and I was like, man, that snare sounds, you know, crank it up, you know, but it, yeah. it had, a, and, but, you know, Clad Stubblefield, all these, you know, there's all that Stuart Copeland. I mean, there's, there's a million things, John Stane, you know, like all these, but crank it up. And if it sits right in the mix too, it's funny when we made, we made our first record, um, maybe this is a bit off topic, but it's, we were so stoked. We're like, we made our first record. We're on a real record label and a real, you know, real producer and a real studio and all this stuff. And uh, we did it with Terry date, you know? And so we tracked it and it was all great. We went to mix it and we were all trying to get in there like, yo man, push the snare up, you know, and everyone's coming at him from every direction, trying to like, 
push my shit up, make it, you know, make the guitars loud. You know? So he finally yeah. just, he got a big thing of gaff tape and do like a penalty box around the board, around the desk, you know, and he's like, <laughs> all right, everyone behind that, behind that. And then finally he's like, look, dude, the next record, he's like, man, guys, leave me alone for a few hours. This, we're going to do this song today. Um, you know, just, just go out, have a lunch, go have a beer, do what you need to do, come back. And then we'll, we can, you know, but that learning thing, but it's so funny because we were all trying to like, you know, but it was always bring the snare up, man. So, you know, but even <laughs> Stefan, our guitarist was like, you got to bring that snare up, crank it up. He used to sit yeah. back. He used to like, I used to, it, I hated it because he, he would always sit down. He's, he loves playing drums. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's not a drummer, but well, he, is, yeah, he plays drums. We're all drummers. Come on. Wait, right. But yeah, he's, so but he fun. would sit, he would always sit and just crank my, I would turn around and I would see him. He would always be cranking my snare up, like crank, like, you know, but it would sound great. I was like, yeah. man, it sounds, you know, I hate that you're doing that so much off my shit. Yeah. But God, it sounds good. So he's always been a, you know, and of course there's, there's so many different things like, you know, does it fit the song? Is it appropriate? You know? And so I always have two snares too. One is kind of the left the side snare is kind of tuned more like booty. It needs to sound kind of gross, but also it needs to do a lot of things. So mm -hmm. I've been messing with different, like a, I kind of settled on like a, like a brass chromo chrome over brass kind of, cause it, I can tune it low, but if it's still tuned low, it can still, it's got, you know, nice finesse and brassiness yeah. to it too. So, and then my main snare is usually pretty much cranked up. So, you know, yeah. the different and records. You have, yeah. a, you have a signature snare, right? With Tama. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell, tell us about that because you use that on, I think it was the latest record. You were saying that you used that on most of the right. songs. Yeah, I use that on the entire album. I, I always bring a bunch of snares. I have some old Bill Brasses that I love and um, and just these ones that I, I, I mean, you can never have too many snares, you know? Right. <laughs> so I always bring all, I bring all these snares and um, and we'll rent some sometimes as well. Uh, but we ended up just using that, my, my drum, my signature drum on the entire record, except for one song, The Spell of Mathematics, which I had another kit kind of set up in the side, just mic'd real simply and that had mm -hmm. one of my little bell brasses on that. But yeah, it's, it's a, um, Tama, make some more. Right. People were asking about them. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of funny. Like, that's, ama that's a, an amazing thing. I can't believe that even happened. Um, you know, thanks, Tama. They, they yeah. asked me one day. Yeah. It was, yeah. but so it's kind of cool. Uh, I was trying to meld these two worlds together. Like, I always use these Tama bell brasses, which are amazing. One of my most favorite drums ever. Um, and then also, these vented Orange County drums that I used for a long time on, on like my own summer, the first, well, that was actually, yeah, all of, all of around the fur was on that was on an Orange County OCDP kit. Um, mm -hmm. And, but those snares, like, you know, digital bath is one of those vented, you know, 20, 30 ply, you know, with these two inch holes. So when the opportunity arose, I was like, can we, combine these two things so it's the it's three millimeter brass the same as as most of the uh, i mean some of them are fives too but three millimeter brass but also with these holes like um very cool these oc discs yeah so hopefully getting that that articulation and the you know the those vents make it super loud it, you know cranks cuts and then but it also you know it's pretty versatile as well you can tune it down low and, but it still has yeah. these uh, these snares like you know kind of the ghost notes everything popping through nice so that's awesome. That was that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, when OCDP came out with those snares, I, I was like, what is this? This is the they were I mean, everywhere. Like, Every, yeah. Everybody. So cool. Yeah. And like you think about snare drums and yeah, there's uh, here and there, there's innovation in snare drums. But like to see something like that, I had never seen that before. I was like, this right. is crazy and awesome. <laughs> yeah. There's a 150 right. ply snare drum with, you know, like with a, with a hole in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, they were definitely onto some wild stuff too. So I'll, all love to those those guys as well you know absolutely absolutely yeah. and speaking of signature product you have a, a stick with vader as well um and i know good wood like, what was that the good wood the good vader. wood yes <laughs> yeah and i didn't know this i read this that it's called the cool breeze your stick yeah right and that yeah. that is somehow a nickname of yours Hey, cool breeze. Yeah. 
It's, <laughs> it's some, I'm not definitely not the coolest person in the room, but it's a nickname that stuck. Um, hey, yo, cool breeze. Uh, I love it. I had yeah, no idea. So, I didn't know yeah. that. A breeze flowing through, cool breeze. Right, but yeah, yeah, but you're but you're pretty cool, Abe. So it makes sense. And like, also, Thanks, you're <laughs> you're welcome. Also, you're so chill. Like your personality is so laid back. Any time that I've had a chance to spend time with you, I just think of you as like so chill and just like kind of go with the flow. And positive, which I always appreciate, like the positivity. Um, so it kind of fits when I read that. I was like, oh, okay, all right, that works. <laughs> hey, positive positivity is a plus. It's not always easy, but you know, it is. Try to keep it up. Yes, got it. No, uh, yeah, man, cool breeze. But it's just a, it's sort of a joke that stuck, and it's, uh, it's silly. But they call me cool it. breeze. Yeah. Great, it's great. Um, and I just uh, speaking of cool, um, what. I know you've traveled everywhere. You've been all over the place. And one of the things that always fascinates me is like the influence that travel has on a person, right? Like you go, you see other places, other people, other cultures, like the way that people live and like being able to bring right. that back to your personal life and your, and your personality. I, I always say like, you can't go somewhere else and leave unchanged, right? Like you... You can't go to like Japan and come home and be the same person you were before you went to Japan for the first time, I feel. Um, and I'm just wondering, like, where have you been that you loved or that you, you know, like going back to or or where would you like to go? Um, I mean, everywhere. I always say I love going places because, you know, I, I live in Sacramento and I love to leave Sacto, but I always love to come home to it as well. Japan is one of my most favorite places to go. And, and as, as a band, it's one of our, our most favorite places. We don't get to go there um, often as, you know, and we actually, we used to go and actually do little small tours there, but now it's usually more for like a festival kind of thing or whatever. Um, Japan is just, it's such a trippy spot because it's so, it's so deep with its, you know, its history, but it's yeah. smack dab with technology and, and, you know, it's such a weird, uh, melding of these these two opposite worlds that are you know and it, and therefore it's just wild. plus you're in the future if you're coming from here you know you're like right you're across the international date line like hey man I'm I'm in the future so right. but I, you know really but just going anywhere I mean for us when we started it was just us trying to you know play in town and then it was the next town you know and, and the next town the next county the next city next state you know and the next continent the next mm -hmm. where can we go where you know Will you have us? We'd love to come, you know? So, right. um, yeah. So, I mean, of course, just being able to get back to that and just, I, I love traveling. I like collecting miles. Um, you know, I love all that too, you know? And I just love, I love airports. I love watching people. I love flavors. Um, I love being so smoked and wiped from just and burnt from, from different, you know, time zones, hemispheres where you get in that groove and it's almost like, it's a bit hazy too, but you're floating through, you know, these airports and just watching and like fried and want to go you know, all that wrapped into one is, is my favorite thing in the world, you know, and getting to play drums while doing that is a dream come true. So, you know, but I love going places and we've been very lucky to be able to go. And now we're, uh, you know, I love, have not been to India yet. We've had a couple of opportunities. Um, there's a really big uh, rock metal scene there as well. Um, mm -hmm. And, but it's more like if we were sort of in transit already, maybe we could make one of those things happen. The yes. couple of times that we had had offers, we were kind of, we were already, you know, we were home. It would be too much just to go there for a one-off kind of thing, but sure. we'd love to go to India. I love, um, yeah, but we've not been to India. Let's go. Let's do it. That's great. You should absolutely, the, I've never been to India either, but uh, it's yeah. really interesting that you mentioned that because I have heard that the metal scene is is big there and they have yeah. some like different festivals and things so that's yeah. great that's so great and then in mentioning going to japan going to the future like not only are you literally in the future but yeah. you've experienced you experience things that you're like why don't we have this so <laughs> like what? totally yeah that's the whole thing just seeing things seeing how other people do it and you're also like man i'm i'm lucky i'm from where i'm from you know too yes. so but but Absolutely. seeing 
And just again, getting back to just the flavors, if you sat down with someone and, you know, I mean, it's been said a million times, but Anthony Bourdain said this. I mean, if you just sat, if you sat down with someone and just shared their flavors and kicked it and broke bread and just took time to hang and understand yeah. and, but flavors bring people together, man. You know, I, it's, it's huge. So, you know, just being able to just cruise and get turned on to different things, but seeing, but just seeing, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, the other thing too is I've experienced, um, a language barrier. So like sitting down to eat with someone and, and yeah. you don't speak the same language. Um, I'm just my, in my head. I'm remembering a trip to South Korea, just sitting with a bunch of South Korean drummers. They did not speak English. I did not speak right. Korean. And it was, but we had dinner together and communicated in our own way, which was beautiful. And I'll yeah. never forget that, you know? So it's that, I feel like it's those kind of experiences that, that are changing and, and For we're real, like, yeah. Words aren't, aren't, words aren't necessary. You know, you find a way mm -hmm. to communicate and especially through music, you know, I mean, you could through rhythms and, and drum beats and, and melody and, you know, I mean, that's what it's all about. So you can create, you're not supposed to like this music. You're from there. I'm, you know, that's, that's ridiculous. It's, it's, right. That's, that's, that's bullshit. You should, it's all, it's for everyone, you know? So, and there's yeah. so much to hear, so much to hear and see, you know, if you just listen to, music man it's it's not just it's amazing it's what it's all about and to go and see yeah. and you see how, how much talent there is too people just playing in this town square people playing in the street and some you know faraway land that like man these people these players are amazing you know and it's and yeah yeah so that's in, and that's incredible um and music i think is like the ultimate connector it's just totally. it's it is amazing um, so speaking of which, music wise, what what do you have coming up for hmm. for you and for the Deftones? What what is happening? What can we expect? Oh, that's a really good question, Sarah. <laughs> I'm sinking in my chair. Hold up. I'm sinking. Um <laughs> so we just got done with these this little bit uh you know of getting back to it. I think we have oh we have um we have a festival called oh. Dia Los Deftones. Um and it's it, I don't know why. Well, maybe because it's beautiful. It's it's down in San Diego, um, and Very it could nice. be any it could be anywhere, I suppose. But uh, we've done two so far, and it's eight bands, us or one of them on seven other bands or artists, whatever. Mm -hmm. And this year will be the third year. It was supposed to happen, obviously, a couple years ago, which would have been the third iteration of this thing. Um, and we're doing it this year. So remember. So to answer your question, long story short. Uh, we have that November 5th, I believe, and they're going to announce it, I think, this week or something like that. So we've chose our bands and it's going to be rad. So that's amazing. It's a, our own festival, you know. That that's fantastic. Yeah. And after that, we I think we have uh, a week or two in down, oh, down under, a week or so, a week and a half down in um, in Australia in early, de early December, I believe. And that's it for the year for us. Um, that's great. But, there's a new year coming up too. So yay. All yeah. right. Wink, wink. We'll see what yes. <laughs> we will see. We'll have to just wait and find out. Right. Yeah. Um, Fingers, yeah. I hope good things. I hope good things for everyone. That's the plan. Um, uh, yeah. So definitely, hopefully some tournament. We're just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Communicating and seeing what's cracking, see what's going That's on. Good. You're zooming, yeah. zoom calling each other, figuring it we out. We are, we are. <laughs> and it's pretty damn cool. It's like, that's a great, I mean, it, I became, pretty damn good at this except for this one where i'm not on google chrome or whatever so where are you i was trying to log i was like oh i'm supposed to be logging in and someone answered some doordash person was at the door i'm like this is timings this is terrible but here we are so you know what though the beauty is we figured it out we always figure yes. it out we're we are we can adjust and we talked through it we communicated and talked through it we and did. we did yeah. we made it we got to do this and hang together virtually which i'm so grateful for and um, I'm going to put links to your Instagram and we'll, we'll put links to, um, the Deftones page and everyone okay. can follow along, find out what's happening, coming up, get tickets to that festival in November and, um, enjoy the beautiful San Diego weather. That would be nice. Ooh, um, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just, I'm so grateful that you were, um, able to take some time to hang today. 
I really appreciate it. Cannot wait to see you. Hopefully you'll come through Boston at some point or I'll get out your definitely. way. Yeah, Sarah. No, yeah, we will definitely hang again in person. I thank you so much. This your podcast is awesome. A great, great Aww. variety of, of folks on that too. And and I, I thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being Boy. here. I will see you soon. Okay. I'll be All around. Right. Okay. Yes. We'll see each other around. Definitely. All right. Take cool. care. Thank you, Sarah. Have a good Thank one. Thank you. Bye. Peace. Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.